Okay. So, uh, yes, Chief, have a seat anywhere. And, uh, Is that so microphone on? Should be on. There. Yeah. Uh, he shut that one. So uh, I'm going to begin by letting uh, Chief Curry uh, go ahead and make some comments. We did have a, uh, an issue about safety that came up at our last meeting, and, and maybe we could share some of our concerns with the chief, but uh, Can the floor is open to you. Okay. Can you do your approval of minutes first and then go into that? Sure. Uh, did everybody have an opportunity to read over the minutes? And uh, I know there were eight pages there. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Do we have a motion to approve? I move to approve the minutes. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. The minutes are approved. And uh, Chief Curry, you have the floor. Well, good morning, and thank, thank you for having me, first of all. And Mr. Rooney, correct? I think we spoke? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and, and uh, I was going to ask to come, but he beat me to the point and said, well, why don't, based on our conversation, why don't you come to the meeting? And I certainly will come as many times as you would like me to as well to report on whatever's needed. And uh, there's a, two, two things that I just want to speak about this morning. First is the, um, the area in and around the old courthouse in Pocahontas Park. We uh, we've have a lot of documents as far as our efforts in the Pocahontas Park area and what we've done over the years as far as our foot patrols and close patrols and things like that, uh, to include more recently where uh, right by the Chamber of Commerce building uh, to the rear there, we actually, the city and us, decided to take down one of the gazebos because the gazebo, as nice as it was there, and a little away from the park uh, itself as far as the activity goes, was being used um, f uh, by the homeless individuals for the most part to sleep uh, overnight. And of course, you're not allowed to sleep in any of our parks uh, overnight uh, and after hours. Uh, and they were uh, additionally charging their cell phones. There was actually an electrical outlet there. So we took the gazebo down to, to thwart that and also you know, disconnected electricity. So I think that's helped. We've modified some of the park benches over the years, believe it or not, um, because a long bench was uh, conducive for laying down and sleeping and they put little partitions in and what have you. So, you know, we had complaints from uh, community members and families alike that would be there with their children and, and were uncomfortable. Uh, we do have eyes and ears there from the Heritage Center as well that help us out. Um, but I think we've done a pretty good job there in being responsive and, and proactive in, in dealing with Pocahontas Park and making it a, a nice area for the, for families and their children to visit. Um, the uh, the food pantry, I know we talked about that a little bit. What was what we were seeing before, and the GO Line, of course, moved. The hub is out by the airport, as you probably know, but the hub for the GO Line used to be there as well. So it was a matter of convenience there in and around the Pocahontas Park area in the 23-2400 block of 14th Avenue. It was transportation. It was food. You know, it was <laughs> Everything a they to, need. It was a place to lay your head. And it was also uh, First Baptist Church. And I'm not sure if they still were, are, are offering it, but they were allowing individuals to shower. So again, right in within a, a block or two, you could do just about everything you needed to, to do. And of course, it was downtown as well. And I just wanted to share the hours. I did look into the pantry. It's, it is still in operation uh, just outside the, the rear there and between the uh, First Baptist. But Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And Tuesday and Thursday, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. So again, they are still in operation. And, and they're there uh, for the right reason, obviously. And, and, and uh, we support that. But we also want to make sure it's um, everything's done right and then the people are safe as well, uh, including the, the homeless. Uh, secondly, the, um, was, we were given a list of addresses for the historic downtown economic development zone. And I, I, I believe from our conversation it was going to be more of the downtown area. But the address we were given, and I was just explaining to Sherry a little bit, this is literally all of Vero Beach without the beach. It's the whole whole downtown and city limits, uh, uh, you know, sh um, east or west of the river. So, a little difficult in uh, finding information for all of that. For instance, 1600 to 3000 block US 1. That's just the first entry here, and that's our city limits on US 1 from 1600 block by Checkers all the way almost to the hospital. So. Um, what I did do, and I can and I can always bring anything specific if there's a specific area or more of a, a an area that we can we can condense and, and report on. Certainly do that. But uh, I wanted to share. I've got calls for service for every entry here, um, but I did pick the four 
that had the most call for service, and it is 1600 block of US 1 to 3000 block of US 1, 3039. 1600 block uh, to 2400 block of 14th Avenue, that's the entire downtown 14th Avenue, 16th Street by the Shell Station, all the way to 2324 4th Street there. 1624 calls for service. The 800 block, uh, which is US 1 to 20th Avenue and 20th Street, we had 893 calls for service, and again, this is last year. And then 800 block, again, US 1 area to 1750, 1700 block of 21st Street, kind of paralleling 20th Street there, we had 807. So those four areas are the largest for calls for service. Now, keep in mind, calls for service, you may say, wow, 3,039 is a, a pretty good number for US 1. But you have to remember that's traffic stops, mm -hmm. that's uh, um, keep watches, close patrols. It's just not crimes, if you will, uh, where somebody said, I have a theft, <coughs> or what have you. So it's everything we do. Um, and because everything we do uh, has at least a calls for service number. Chief, is that calendar year 14? 14, 14, 14 okay. yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So those are the four. But what I did do with those four, I broke that down a little bit uh, for, for the board here. And again, anytime we can, if you have a business, Mr. Chisholm, we can always pull your information, anything in, in your, uh, your business or anyone else's, like we can get everything for the whole year at a specific address. So that's not an issue, and that can be obtained quickly. But just to share with you, I looked at thefts and burglaries. That's something we have uh, uh, more, more so, and I know that's a concern of, of business owners and, 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 and alike. Uh, but we had, uh, of the um, four areas, we had 76 total uh, crimes as far as burglaries and thefts, 17 burglaries, 59 thefts. So to give you an, an example, 1600 block, 24th uh, to 2400 block of 14th Avenue, again, downtown, we had 18 uh, offenses there, and primarily they were thefts. And the other area, mostly the, the 30 of the 76 were the US-1 corridor, again, thefts and burglaries. And then from 800 block uh, to 1700 block of 21st Street, there was 20 and eight uh, from US 1 to 20th Avenue, the main uh, uh, westbound uh, twin pair. So the numbers aren't that bad when it's broken down uh, in that regard. Uh, I always say one's too many of any crime. Uh, but I just wanted Chief, to share I that a little bit. I hate to interrupt, but just for the sure. benefit of the committee, can you make the distinction between the theft and the burglary? Burglary. I know Gary knows because he's an attorney, but. Sure. Uh, a theft is basically um, depriving somebody of their property. If I if I take you know if I take a pen off this table or you know your name tags here and I leave, if if anything that, that you own, the burglary is more of a of a structure or a conveyance. If I enter your home and take something or commit a crime, if I enter, enter your home and, and and batter batter you, it's a burglary and a battery. If I enter your car and take something from the car, that's a burglary. If I enter your car and hit you, that could be a burglary battery. I'm entering the conveyance, which is a, a vehicle, move something, a moving object, could be a boat even, uh, uh, a vehicle, or, or a conveyance. And to include a carport. Mm -hmm. uh, carports, covered areas, uh, are considered part of the conveyance as well. So um, we have sometimes thefts from carports, and they're, they're technically burglaries because, again, of the, the, the letter of the law. Uh, but that's pretty much the, the distinction, as, as easy as I can put it. Thank you. Sure. Uh, but those are some of the numbers, again, and if, if, the, any, if there's anything that anyone needs specifically, uh, or you'd like me to come back to report on anything that we're doing or that I can help with, I certainly will do that. Yeah. And I mean, Gary, I know you raise the issue about public safety, uh, and particularly regarding your parking lot in the rear, and, and I think the chief has addressed. Is there anything else you want to ask him uh, while he's here? Because I know his time is limited this morning. And Right. You know, I think at the last meeting, it wasn't really to say there was, I didn't want to claim there to be a problem, but simply sure. an issue. We were, it, it, last meeting was issue spotting, identifying from the geographic region that we had. One of the issues was, you know, how to, uh, one of the goals is, trying to get more people downtown and one is to attract them, one is not to um, keep them away or deter them. So one of the deterrents we talked about was some of the issues downtown and, and how bad they were. My limited uh, exposure was where my business is, the old courthouse, mm -hmm. and the fact that at nighttime, you know, we're cautious with the ladies that work in our sure. office. 
Um, so that was just identified that as an issue. And after that meeting, we were going to each drive around the area and ask for a breakdown because what, what is the hot spot in that area? So looking at that 14th Avenue section, the art district, and then the other side of uh, 60, sort of all the way to the downtown court or the old courthouse, what is the hot spot if there is one in there? What the ideas that we're coming up with is how to get people downtown and keep them uh, feeling safe and secure. Sure. And we talked about lighting, obviously, as an issue. Uh, I think one of the great ideas that someone had was a trolley system, which is in, used in Fort Pierce, because then you can hop around and go down the other streets, which you know may not be as well lit if you have a transportation. So we're really, from your perspective, is there a hot spot on 14th that's more the epicenter? I know there's some convenience stores. Um, there's the park. Uh, and just from your perspective, what's the cause of perhaps um, the draw of uh, where the crime may be emanating from? Um, there's, it's, it's as urban as we have in, in Vero, if you will. And just off of 14th Avenue, uh, there's a lot of um, rental properties and not that rental properties, there aren't, I'm not saying that there aren't good people in rental properties, but uh, historically, We've dealt with individuals um, in, the, in a, that area, you know, a few blocks to the west, a few blocks to the east, if you will, Old Dixie, uh, by the Freshman Learning Center, over toward 20th Avenue. Uh, spoke to Mr. Degg a number of times about some of the concerns there. Um, so again, it's 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 the older homes, it's the uh, uh, the rentals, um, maybe bringing a little less income, if you will. Um, again, that's not pointing a finger uh, because there's always good amongst our, our bad, if you will. Um, but a lot of that is, is where w the individuals we deal with as far as the thefts, uh, you know, they, they, you know what, it's an opportunity, you know, a crime of opportunity, a theft, what have you. Some of these were vehicle uh, thefts as well. But, you know, if I'm two blocks away from uh, a main corridor, if you will, a, a urban corridor with, with the convenience stores and and people that are walking up and down the street and parking their cars and businesses are open, that's opportunity for me as a, as a bad guy. Right. So I'm a couple blocks away. Um, so, so historically, that's what we've seen over the years. Yes, there, we've had some uh, concerns with uh, one or two of the convenience centers that we've uh, worked with and worked uh, against, if you will. Um, the park, I think we have a pretty good grasp on that, but again, if, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> so, and, and it's a very, it's convenience, you know, it's, uh, you know, why house yourself, you know, three, four miles away where you got to walk into town every day, um, if you, as opposed to somewhere where you're going to find food, shelter, and, and everything you need. So, it's a daily um, effort, which um, that's part of what we do in an in effort to make everyone safe. And as far as, you know, the building there, if the ladies are coming out uh, at night, they can always give us a call if they see somebody and they're not comfortable with going to their car, please call us. And that's for any business uh, uh, here in, in the city. Um, just give us a call and we'll make sure they get to their car safely. Uh, no you problem know, whatsoever. You know, and thank you for that explanation. I, I've got a question, though, and, and I don't know if you've broken it down or if you have a, just a gut feeling about it. The time that most of these crimes occur, do most of them occur after dark? Uh, uh, are there a, is there a certain hour frame that we have a higher incidence of crime? I'm, I'm suspecting that after dark is probably the highest incident. And the second thing that came up, so, so it's a two-part question, Chief, is that uh, there was a suggestion that uh, a great crime deterrent would be to have an officer on on a beat, so to speak, and and particularly a a foot. You know, we we had in those old days where where an officer would actually walk the neighborhood on foot, or maybe a Segway, or perhaps a bicycle, or something where they're a little more you know, uh, they're kind of rubbing shoulders with the public and seeing a little bit more than you'd see from a, a, a squad car, you know. So those are the two things. What time do the crimes occur, and is it possible to get somebody actually to patrol this in, in a manner that would be kind of a little more observant uh, from a personal point of view? Right, and they're good questions, and, and some of these reports, a lot of it, I'm just glancing at it, I can be, uh, uh, if I have more time, that it's it's all through. It's you know midday, two o'clock, all the way up to midnight, um, depending on on the crime. Some of these are uh, thefts from, for instance, Kmart, and that includes our 1600 block uh, over that way in that shopping plaza, what have you. Um, so generally, um, 
you know, I, I was actually uh, thinking about sharing sharing this with you, but I didn't want to speak too soon. But since you said it, I I, I, I will. I'm have, I having one on ones with all our employees right now. I, Sit downs and just uh, listen. I want to be more of a listener than than a talker, and uh, listen to them and where they're where they're at in their careers and uh, suggestions, comments, thoughts, what have you. And and one of my thoughts and suggestions that I've actually shared with them. So I guess I'm going to have to make it happen now that I, that I say it is is just that is is uh, having a bike or two. Um, to me, that's always been a, a thing, you know. And I tell the and. I brought it up to a few of the officers. You know, we can we can sit in our steel cage, if you will, with four wheels and patrol, and that's a great thing. But to, to be out of that uh, vehicle and walking or biking, and we do we do the the night the night watches. I'm, I, the guys on midnights will stick their card in your door and say, "I was here checking your building." So we've done that for years, and we, uh, we yeah. continue to do that. And so, it's excellent. Yes. Yeah, so we great. are out on foot in that regard. So, um, and that's always, but, but I really want to this year uh, bring back a bike or two where we can utilize the bikes, put the rack on the vehicle. Um, it won't, it's not a full-time effort, if you will, but um, it's different officers assigned to that where they can park somewhere downtown, get on the bike, be visible. Uh, they certainly can go where, where cars can't, um, but make sure that the, the businesses and the, the uh, visitors see them, see them like that. So a little more friendlier, if you will. Again, they're not in the car. Uh, and, and we're going to do that, you know, for Ocean Drive and, and our uh, Miracle Mile and pla uh, the shopping places for the holidays, things like that. So, so I've, I've kind of committed to that. So I better make that happen. <laughs> Great. That, that was Great. already a thought. Um, this might seem like an odd idea, but <clears throat> you know, uh, we had talked about the idea of perhaps having some uh, smartly placed kiosks in the area, and I'm wondering if we had a kiosk, the type that an officer could actually be in, sort of a, uh, you know, something perhaps near Pocahontas Park or right there, so that people could know that there's always an officer um, or at, at certain times of the day there's always an officer positioned in a central location downtown. Is that a realistic I'm not so sure if it is for this this community, mm -hmm. and, and um, I think what you're saying is, and I can relate. If, uh, you know, for instance, if you go down to Broward, Palm Beach, maybe, and uh, I see them all the time on, in some of the magazines, but you'll go into a shopping mall or the the parking lots have those. They they actually go up in the air. They raise up, and the windows are tinted. And it has the emblem of the agency that's, that works that area. And, and they may be in there or not. Most of the time, they're probably not because it's resources and mm -hmm. personnel. And yeah. to stick someone in one spot, you're pulling them away from, you know, working a, a larger area, if you will. So um, <clears throat> I, I think with our response time here in the city, and it's honestly second to none in the city Very limits, and, and, and the, the, the number of officers we have. Uh, and, and the caring attitude and effort that they possess, I think we're, we're okay there. I really do. Um, but but I think that's what you're talking about. You see, you see those uh, one of those carry. You know, it's like a substation. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they can raise up and. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> right, a substation. That's a good way of putting it. Like they have in the malls, they have a the sheriff's department might have an office that's sometimes. It's, well, that, I wasn't really thinking of anything <clears throat> quite so elaborate. I was no, thinking I of something much more scaled down, literally like a booth. I, I was thinking of you when you were talking about it, it sounded like you were talking about a, a, essentially a phone booth. Uh, well, a little bit bigger than a phone booth, and uh, a little bit smaller than a substation. There's a big badge on it. Somewhere in between. Yeah. Well, years ago, we did this. You, you, I'm sure you remember 15, 18 years ago when we were trying to redevelop downtown. We had a walking policeman that came through. Mm -hmm. The best part of that whole scenario was he got to know the shop owners by name, just like we know our postman, because he walks in and hands it to us and says, how you doing? Sure. Uh, my thought when we were talking about security was a twofold thing. We can do it without adding any cost to your department, 
except bicycles. And we had bikes, I don't know where they are now, but they're not around, but you had two bikes at that time. And uh, the police department's lot is right across the street. So I don't know why they would need a car to do anything but park their car there and get on their bike to cover the downtown area. No problem from there. And, and now if it's raining, of course, you're not on a bike, but, but not a set route, but a route where this week he stops into four or five places at this uh, not always the same ones because that's what happens you get into that routine of stopping in your place my place and you never see the the new guy but uh, that was very very successful and what it did was give a mindset to people that came in our stores was that we knew the person it's just like the old beat cop was even though it wasn't and uh, the exposure was tremendous. Now, you don't have to set days. You don't say we do it Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. We do it, and you don't have to do it from two to one or, you know, whatever time frame, but it's a sporadic. Uh, goes through Pocahontas Park, stops, talks to the guys on the benches when he comes back through. If they're still there, I don't know if you have a time limit, but uh, that type of thing. And I don't see that adding to our budget for the city at all by taking the person who's driving this area to say this afternoon, because it's your exercise day, uh, you will ride from here and put six miles on the bike before you come back. Yeah. I mean, that's a... It's a win-win. It's an exercise program for your department, and it's no a great it. exercise program for the people who have businesses. I would think some of your guys would really like that approach. Well, the, again, I've, I've been talking to the employees, and and the, the one yesterday said, well, Chief, don't forget to think of me when if you do that. And then and right. I know there are several that, that are like that. And again, there's a, there's a several aspects to sure. it, the fitness aspect. And even, uh, you're, you're right, Mr. Chisholm, biking from the department down. But one thing you can do, even if as close as it is, you can, we can also park a, a marked unit. That's a deterrent. Oh, in, by all in means, itself, yes. in, in a parking lot or somewhere close to downtown in case it does rain or maybe does have sure. to go to a, an emergency call where he does need a vehicle to get into he or she. Mm -hmm. So um, either way. Yeah, um, it, it's, I, just, it's I just meant that seemed like a pretty easy solution. Without to, question. Mm -hmm. Without question. Is there currently an increase of patrol or persons dedicated to the downtown area, um, say, in the evenings? Uh, or on, of course, probably on the Friday Fest, but just the general evenings, because uh, you see a lot of people downtown uh, going to the dinners and the stuff. Currently, is, is there more patrol during that time, or is that? No, uh, we, we have, uh, for Friday Fest specifically, we actually, you know, they hire officers that are on foot, and they just take care of that, that detail. So, <clears throat> for instance, you don't have to rely on an officer that's working that area to, they may come and assist, but there's already officers there that are working. We don't um, uh, increase our patrols necessarily um, in the evenings. Don't we have an ordinance that if they have an, an event like that, that they have to pay officers to be there? And specifically with alcohol as well. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So anything that yeah, took place two in that area. There in, on every event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So, so I know your time is limited, uh, Chief, and, yeah, and if we don't have any more questions, I, I mean, uh, if you do, please proceed yeah the uh, the uh, community you know we talk a little bit about community policing and some of the 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 if you will old techniques biking and foot patrols some of those things are are still effective and can be effective and, and we, we always think about being efficient and technology and things that can help us and that, that's good but some of the things that have always worked are still in place and, and you, we, we can't necessarily get away from that either one thing we have to be real careful of as a group is not to talk about security and make it our main event or else we're going to create that there's a security problem, right. which I'm telling you there is not one mm -hmm. in downtown. Been there for 15, 18 years now. I've been broken into once. Uh, there have been a problem, but when you hear that list, it sounds like in segments it's about 800 calls a year in these grouping areas. Right, and that was the larger. Yeah, and the larger one was the, the 3,100 or something which was from the US city line, line. And, and again that's everything we do so it, it it's it's not a problem what I think our committee needs to do is figure out a way to make that more enhanced by visibility to say without saying they're there for security that they're there well I love the idea of the bicycle yeah. patrol because I think that's really a viable solution and it's it's all about visibility and the more visible you are yeah. uh, the more of a deterrent it is to the public and, and just like you said and so many times we see that uh, 
that car, whether it's a trooper's car, or a local police officer's car, sheriff's car, and, and there's really nobody in it, but what a deterrent. And, and particularly if that car is associated with a bicycle patrol, because that guy's going to be returning to that vehicle. Mm -hmm. And so that car could be placed in, a, in an area that we've identified through your reports as maybe having a little higher incidence of crime. I think the public perception is that uh, when it gets dark, uh, it's a little scarier out there. Sure. And, and so, so that's when we really like the uh, visibility or the higher visibility. And, and I don't know if your figures are going to bear that out, but uh, it seems to me that the cover of darkness may present more opportunities for criminals. And, and so having said that, if, if nobody has anything else for you, Chief. Uh, oh, I just, just to reiterate, I think that any time that you are familiar with the faces and the names of the police officers uh, that are serving you, <clears throat> you feel more comfortable mm -hmm. um, rather than just some guy who, or gal who's coming in that you're not familiar with. Um, and I think that makes the business owners feel better. I think it makes the uh, general community feel better if they are coming downtown and they see uh, a group of people that they have a slight familiarity with. Or even if they don't recognize their faces, they know that there's always somebody there. And that's very important. The other thing I just want to say, and which was, um, <clears throat> you know, I just want to say thanks because uh, in the five years that I've been downtown in business, uh, police response has been pretty, not that we've needed police response, but we've seen things happen, sure. uh, accidents and uh, whatnot. Uh, police response has been pretty incredible, I think. Um, and the policy of officers going around checking doors at night, I've gotten uh, the cards stuck in there. Uh, I also got a call in the middle of the night because the officer found my door unlocked. We had forgot to lock the door at night. So, um, it's a good call to receive, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, generally, uh, I think you guys do a great job, and uh, should be acknowledged for that. Thank you. Appreciate it. I, I talk a lot about connectivity with the community, and that's uh, you know things that we can do to connect and. And I try to attend as many events or gatherings as I can to, so people can put a face to the agency as well. But I think it's the, the more faces they can associate with, uh, like you're saying, even with the officers, is important. So mm -hmm. that's how we connect. And, you know, I, I think to encourage the officers to participate in community events, you know, uh, you know I, I'm thinking, of course, of the art stroll because that's a big event for us. But um, any event, Downtown Friday. Great point. And I, I'm not talking about just offic an official capacity, but we, we should encourage them to just be part of our community. Yeah, I, I love that idea, Barry. And, and so we invite you to our Downtown Friday. We've got one coming up the last Friday of this month. and, and Hope you and any of your officers can attend. Is you know just to enjoy yourselves, not as uh, we like to do that from time to time. Necessarily in uniform, maybe in your civilian clothes, and, and bring your wives and and just uh, just experience the downtown as a civilian, like uh, so many of the people that come to these events. So, cool. Thank you. All right. Thank you. If you if you'd like to have me back anytime, just give me a little bit of. Uh, heads up and uh, whatever you'd like me to bring as far as statistics or information uh, to report on, I gladly will do that. When we don't have any more trouble, we'll call you. Yeah. <laughs> <There> you <go. laughs> Thank you, Chief Curry. I'd like to uh, kind of, you know, uh, it's great. Uh, first, I want to thank the committee, and, and I want to thank the chief for coming and, and giving us his input, and I think it makes all of us feel a little better about the uh, police presence in the area. But I'd also like to thank the committee. Scott's put together uh, kind of a, a detailed uh, list of items that uh, that maybe we can implement as part of our business plan. and, and uh, I know everybody's uh, kind of, uh, I even have a little uh, a little sheet here from uh, Jessica who couldn't attend. So everybody's got a little input here and, and I'd like to thank the committee for that input. Uh, I, I really would like today to stick to an agenda and there are certain things that we could do very, very quickly and I'd like to get to those items right away if the, do we if have the committee agenda? doesn't mind. And there's an agenda that Sherry distributed and, and it's just kind of, uh, called Economic Development Zone Committee at the top, this title. 
and some of these items I think and these are items that are required items is part of the submittal for the uh, for the downtown business plan and some of them we can get to and we could just uh, pass as a committee and then we can move on because the more difficult things are going to be the capital uh, project type items and, and I'd like to leave that for last today and and get through some of these easy things so so it's broken into two topics topic A and topic B and topic B has to do more with the approvals that we need so uh, we're, we're going to leave that for last and topic A has to do with some of the issues and some of the uh, details that we need to provide as a committee in order to have this plan submitted and passed by the City Council. So the, the first thing is to provide for appropriation and use of funds and actually that's that's a general topic in B, C, D, E, F, and G or subtopics under that topic. And so I, I'm going to skip the uh, the infrastructure capital improvements and expenditures uh, item B there and I'd like to get to some of these items that we could maybe make a motion and 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 get an approval today on uh, w one of the things I'd like to get and, and uh, Tim you, you maybe you could give us some guidance on this is I'd like to get uh, from the property appraisers office a growth analysis and a projection for 2015 whether or not he projects that the assessed valuation is going to grow it may give us some idea mentally about how much money we may have in the first increment year so that's just something that I'd like to get I don't think that requires a motion uh, but item D would be setting 2014 is a base year assessment role and I'd like to do that. Our goal here is to try and get this submitted to the City Council by April. Keep, keep this in mind. There are two City Council meetings in April. I believe the second one is on or about April, is it 21st, uh, Sherry? The 21st at 6 p.m. Okay, so, so uh, that is our deadline for submitting this. And then on or before May 1, and, and this is in, in the bottom part of our report, uh, the city manager will be required to submit this to the property appraiser's office for the approval. So that's, that's more or less time frame. Topic B is more or less time frame. So if, if we can have a motion to designate 2014 as a base year assessment role, uh, we, could, we could get that done right now I'll make the motion that we use 2014 second reason of discussion second okay we have a motion in a second is there discussion on the motion yes Tim are we allowed to use 2014 as the date yes okay that's the only question I have mm -hmm. yeah well I just didn't know if we had to go to 15 because we're just getting started so 15 would be the year the 15 be the year for your tax income Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, but you're right. That's your base to start from, Simone. Okay. Any other discussion on the motion? We have a motion and a second. There being no other discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the motion is carried, and we'll move on to the second item. And the second item is to designate the percentage for the calculation of the tax increment. It can be as high as 95% and it could be any other figure as well so is there a motion to designate the percentage of the actual tax increment that will be funneled back in to the area for capital improvements okay mr chairman uh, i have a question and uh, first of all uh, my apologies to the rest of the committee for my tardiness this morning uh, <clears throat> and uh, secondly uh, just because i'm a right-brained human being when you say select the percent, just tell me in uh, layman's terms what we're talking about here, uh, because I'm not clear on the 95 percent. Okay, I, I'm going to reach out to Tim, and, and maybe right. Tim can give an explanation of that. Why don't I sit up there? Yeah, please. Yeah. Come on down. You, you feel like you're miles away over there. Well, she's <laughs> All right. Yeah. The 95 percent, uh, five, at least five percent of it of the uh, the tax increment has to go into for the like administration processing. So the most you can get out of it is 95 percent, okay. and that's set by council. So you, in this case, you're you you know the the motion is to recommend the 95 percent 
to, to go with that. So the 5% okay. is the most you can go. So in other words, whatever the increment, whatever the tax assessment is, Correct. what we're suggesting is 95% of it be dedicated to... Right. The other 5% would go to the city. Admin. admin. Okay, gotcha. So All right. The increase. Of the increase. Right. That's Out what you're the, talking about. Yeah, yeah your base. Yeah. So the base is the 2014 right. it's the tax roll. Right. So we have what... What was we have a million dollars. It goes to two million. We can get ninety-five percent gotcha. okay. of the right. million new. Okay, clear. And thank you for the explanation. So, so that's per ordinance, and that's an ordinance that the city's already passed, and, and that's the economic development zone ordinance that permits this under under the ordinance. So, uh, if we can have that motion, uh, I I personally would like to see the ninety five percent go back into the zone. We're not going to be raising a lot of money as it is, so uh, I can't see using a lower percentage. So, if we can have a motion, uh, uh, <clears throat> I propose that we use 95% as our uh, incremental increase figure. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion on the motion? Yes. Is there a reason we would not ask for 95%, Tim? Well, no, and particularly your increment right now is so small it can always be adjusted by the council if it gets to right. that point but i mean I would we wouldn't want to ask for anything as less. i pointed out before you had a 20 million dollar decrease right last so 95 percent i think is reasonable to start with mm. is there any further discussion be there being no further discussion uh we'll call for a vote all in favor aye aye, aye. the motion is carried so the uh, increment will be 95% or the percentage will be 95%. And I'll move on to item F here, which is to specify the number. And, and I put here, I recommend one year of fiscal years to be utilized in determining the annual tax increment. It could be more than one year. Uh, it can be two years. It can be three years. So uh, what I'm visualizing is 2014, we've already passed that as our base year. 2015 is our first increment year. And we could say that 2015, 2016, that we'll make it two years or 2017, three years. But I'm recommending that we make it a one year uh, increment uh, one fiscal year for the increment so the increment would be put in the trust fund annually okay is there you want a motion yes I'd like a motion I will uh, move that we <clears throat> do so and uh, make uh, an annual determination of our incremental Oh, what's, what's, <laughs> I'm missing the wording here but uh, you, yes that uh, we're, we're making an, an annual um, there, there's an emo motion to make it the the number one year uh, to be utilized in determining the annual tax increment. Is there a second to that motion, um, Mr. Chairman? I need to look at this. I believe they're talking about the number of total years in your thing, but uh, go ahead with that. I'll I'll, right. I'll clarify. Okay. It. So obviously right. I, the plan has to set up how many years. I mean these are set up okay. so you do a bunch of projects, so yeah. you may have a ten-year thing. So I'll I'll take a look at that. Okay. That's fine. Right. And uh, my understanding yeah. is what we're talking about is uh, a, a yeah. basically setting it up for a year so we c it can be reviewed at the end of one year right but i believe uh -huh. part of what you do is also set what how many years out that you're planning because you're going to have a plan okay. and you're going to have your projects and whatever the funding sources to meet this plan and the plan may be a 10-year plan okay so i'll take a look at that a little closely i apologize I, when when i read that i said I, I can understand how you got that but i believe it's each year you're going to do that and every year you can revisit it i mean under discussion right um i, I take this to be we should have a five-year, yeah. which means the 95% by the city council would be frozen for five years to start the implementation project of the projects we have for that five year. If we do it one year, they can come back the next year and say, well, you funded no projects because we didn't have any money. Yeah. Uh, you, so I think it has to be a longer I, I believe term than one year. I believe that intent was that you establish how many years you out you want to run on that. And you that, could always extend it, but you're right. And that way the five-year yeah. increment would start yeah. for the 95% that the city council would be approving, knowing it's going to be small for those five years till they get a feel of what we're doing. That's true. 
So, so I, I apologize for the confusion. I'm going by your uh, and this. And no, I, no, and I read that too. You could reach that conclusion by reading the, uh, by uh, the way you read it. So that's why I believe it. That was the intent of it, and I probably took that from statute. So the way it's read, right. but I'll I'll clarify that. But I believe you do need to specify how many years out you want it, your plan to run at least. Why don't we table that until we get a clarification okay. on our we'll next meeting yeah. and, and come back because it's just an item that's uh, that's listed as a required item to be submitted for approval in the resolution uh, by the city council. So we'll get a clarification on that item. We'll table that motion if it's all right with the committee and we'll move on to the next item. Do you want to just withdraw your motion and table that item? Yes. Thank you. Okay, the motion is withdrawn. So uh, we've got item G, and item G is setting the initial tax increment year is 2015 We've already set the base year as 2014. Uh, so it'd be nice to know that we may have some funds coming in or approved uh, for use in the tax increment year of 2015. Is there a motion to set 2015 as the increment year, the first initial increment year? Is that automatic as since we've set uh, 14 as the base year? I, I don't know if it's automatic or not, but for the for the sake of clarity, I thought it might be good to make a motion here. It is a required uh, component of the plan to set the initial tax increment year. And that's to the property because we sent it all to the property appraiser's office. So sets so in motion what they have to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I would make a motion to approve 2015 as the increment year, but I, I think, um, well, I'll make that motion so that we can discuss it. So we have a motion in a second? Can Under discussion, I think that, that that year is going to go along with when we start implementation. I think the money is going to be so minimal in 2015, there's not going to be anything you can do. So uh, I don't mean there's not going to be anything, but you could piddle away year after year and never have any money to do a big project. You know, we could do some painting, we could do some, but then we never get to the point of having... Thirty-five thousand dollars to do some bigger project. Well, I, as I explained to you, you're going to have to donations. look. You're going to have to look at other funding sources, exactly. both, both the, from the city uh, general fund to capital. So different ways to look at it. It's the only way, and that hopefully will spur your economic development. Will spur more investment in the downtown and get that tax increment up. So I thought what it was meaning was yeah. that would be the first year that we would start being able to draw funds from that tax and, and that's it. If there's no money, you wouldn't have any money. Well, I know, but if there's account. so little, you want to, wouldn't want to take it anyway. I think we're short-sighted if well, we say 15 as no, the year because we should raise our own funds for the first It'll be put into an account that you wouldn't spend. It'd be held in a trust. So you the 15 me? doesn't mean we can go ahead and start spending it. Well, I mean, you're going to have... It does mean you can go ahead and start yeah. spending it, but, but it doesn't mean that you're required to spend it. No. So you can put it into... You're going to have it in a fund, and you can draw on it when you need to if there's no money. It's not that you have to spend it every year. Yeah. Scott, Scott, I guess my comment on it, and this is an interesting thing, and I sit on the board of directors of Main Street, and we had a board meeting yesterday. Uh, just to give you an example of what can occur here... It, in the, in the way of additional funds, the Press Journal, who's about to take occupancy in uh, Brackett's building that used to be Credit Data Services on the corner of 21st and 14th, they have expressed an interest, uh, an interest in financing a band shell uh, in Pocahontas Park, it, you know, totally at their expense, sponsoring it, financing it, uh, supervising the building of it. So. There are people, and, and you're aware of it, there are people that have the ability, there are companies, there are entities that have the ability to uh, raise significant funds to fund some of these projects that we may want to do. Maybe our part of it might be a little beautification around the uh, band shell. It might be uh, the, the flowers. It may be lighting for it. It may be something that might come under our budget uh, for 2015 uh, should we be able to create some type of fun funding for it. All that means is that when we set the tax increment year, the initial tax increment year is 2015, we have to set a tax increment year to implement this plan. 
And since 2014 is the base year, it would be wise to set 2015 as the increment year. We're not compelled in any manner to spend those funds. Those funds would be subject to the approval of the council, and it would also be uh, part of our uh, I guess our detailed capital improvement plan, which we're going to get to eventually in this committee as well. So, yep. yeah, I believe you could set it at a, a further out date, but before it would start. I mean, that could be done that way. But well, as I said, I don't set know. Aside this, after the 14th. If there's money, it'll be set aside. So, so the year's trivial. It doesn't. I, I think so. Call call for the question. <laughs> Vote. Okay. Any further discussion? The question has been called. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So the motion is carried. And now we can move into the more difficult task. And the more difficult task, obviously, topic B, just please review those. Those are the dates. We need to complete this plan by uh, March 31st. I'm going to keep repeating this. Uh, it can go a little bit later than that, but I'd like the committee to stick to that date mentally. Uh, we have two city council meetings in April. The second meeting is uh, April 21st, so it needs to be submitted to the council for approval, uh, at least to get on the agenda for the April 21st meeting. Uh, if it's approved by the council on uh, April 21, then uh, the city manager will then submit to the property appraiser's office the plan. Uh, by May 1st, then it'll meet the three requirements that I've outlined here. We've already got the boundaries of the zone. We've already made reference to 2014 as a base year and a 95% inc increment to be applied in determining the tax increment. So, so that would be what the city manager does. That's just a little bit of a timetable. I don't think we need to review that, but we can move on to the actual portion of the plan that has to do with capital improvements. That's going to be a good bit more difficult. So I I'm going to give the floor to you, uh, Scott, because you've really spent a lot of time on developing a... Uh, if if you just go to the front page, that's just a listing of some of the projects that I looked at to say they're attainable without a whole lot of funding. You know, we talked about, oh, paver brick sidewalks and all that. Well, you know what? We could paint the walking district until you had money to put in paver bricks and take out the painted sidewalk and put paver bricks if you saw in the future. So that could be a project we could attain. But if you look at the first picture that I've got in there, that is the zone that I'm talking about primarily. I took it right off of our map. I X'd out the areas that don't apply to us. So what you're looking at is the area. That's just a map for you to play with if you want to make a copy and put some dots on it. The next page, which uh, has a big yellow and orange, that's just showing what the city and government owns in this district. That's all that orange is, is what's owned by the school district, the county commission, the school board, the parks, the train station, the post office, the parking lots. Um, uh, city Hall and the police department, and the city hall owns the old library, or the city owns the old library. So that's that's kind of showing you areas that that are governmental owned. The next page. I don't know if you're aware of how many restaurants are in the downtown area. I started making a list. Well, there's. 38 actually and all I did was put a dot on that paper that shows you where they are that's that's all that is is the each dot that you see is the approximate location of these restaurants that are in the downtown area and I did not go past um, what's the one on US one that just changed its name from the steak place uh, used to be the chop house that that's what that bottom one is down here that you see uh, at the bottom of the page number 38 so I didn't go any farther than that because I didn't go down to US one and put the Burger Kings and McDonald's because this is kind of the area that I see we need to impact first so that's all that is is to get you an idea and number 17 way in the bottom right hand side that's the eating establishment that's in the courthouse which is public so just so that you get the idea of of where the eating places are I did not put anything to do with the art areas because it's kind of in, in, in a, a one strip the next page was to show the paver brick sidewalks are in red that we have presently. That's all that is. The blue is my idea to say, you know, we could paint a walking trail, and this is a concept or an idea 
that we could paint on the sidewalk for a minimal amount of money compared to, fair, compared to paver bricks to call it a walking district of downtown. So whether the city would allow it or not allow it, if it's safe, secure, don't have any idea. It's just an idea. They do that in cities like Cadiz when I was there. They had uh, walking where you go and you could, they right. had numbers that, you know, you could pull and, and, out. And or, that's kind of what this was, was to get everybody thinking that if we're trying to attract people, okay. we need to, and we're trying to attract walking. So that's all it is, is to give you the idea. Do we want a walking trail and walk all the way up to St. Helens? Eventually, because what we want to do is help redevelop that section that's up there by St. Helens that at one time they were going to close that block and make that mall. Remember Tim? Somebody was one to... Oh no, I wasn't here for that. <laughs> You're kidding. They wanted to make a shopping area in that oh, between really? the twin pairs oh, from that, that corner hmm. uh, back. Okay. But uh, the next page is um, there's several things on it. Um, to, to help with redevelop a police walking area and bike path I just I, I just thought that that if we had a little more exposure at not set times that that would help us street lighting we need to address street lighting to make it all uniform so that it all has an idea and a concept to it I noticed in the street lighting that we have on 14th that we have a, an established city type of street light but we also have the tall ones with the arm that comes off this chrome I don't know if we could do something to those to start implementing it with a little more decor to set the theme for the walking areas. That, that was just a, a concept. The pavers, which are the colored walkways, that's, that's on here. Uh, benches, banners, parking shuttle, and signs. I think it's pretty important that we could look at signs from our standpoint because I think pretty minimally we could put signs in in strategic areas. Pocahontas Park, which would show an area, map of the area, and show the the, the establishments on that map, just as you have in a mall, when you walk in, you say, where is Dillard's? It's at the other end, because you saw it on the map. So those are some easy things that I thought we could do. Um, also, this, this trail area, uh, I was thinking along the lines um, on the next page, if you look at it, I took and I, I, I had already thought of this shuttle thing after I heard we were doing it downtown anyway, mm -hmm. to say, you know, it's not a bad concept. To start with, it could be a special events thing. But we could, in theory, over time, have a shuttle system for downtown, which what we're trying to do as a group, I think, is encourage people to say, I want to move my business down there because we're taking care of that area and my customer can get to me because there's a shuttle bus that comes by every 20 minutes. There's a, a call box system that they parked over here across the railroad tracks and they pushed an electronic button that lit up uh, a walkie-talkie that told the guy driving the tram to go pick him up. Uh, something pretty simple along those routes, but it just takes thought. Yeah. Uh, Scott, if I may yes. just add one thing about sure. the shuttle concept. Uh, as you know, uh, last Friday night at the downtown art stroll, the art galleries chipped in and we hired uh, the, um, the go line to have a shuttle service and they did uh, take a count we haven't got that number back yet but uh, the initial reaction so far is overwhelming in fact jim o'connor and his wife were in my art gallery and he was ecstatic he said that when they pulled into the parking lot it was just about full uh, the, the, it was a huge success. We have some uh, ideas how to improve it in terms of uh, signage and whatnot, but um, uh, it was so much of a success that um, the, uh, the goal line has determined that next month they're going to, at no extra charge, add a larger bus because they think that the, the, it, they need to do that to accommodate all the people who want to use the shuttle. It just tells me that the shuttle idea will absolutely work. Um, now, I can't say that uh, on a Saturday afternoon in August, it's going to be... Economically feasible. Yeah, but um, certainly during the season, and perhaps as the city grows, uh, it, it will be a, you know, a regular thing. I think it's something that we should focus on because it does allow us to 
establish the downtown area as a viable destination for shopping, tourism, and whatnot. So um, it's great that you did this, and I think the shuttle is uh, one thing we need to press. I think it's a key part because people will go to a one spot that they're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. They will now be able to venture out knowing that they don't have to move their car or drive or park or walk past uh, yeah. areas that are not business oriented that may have yeah. some of the rental issues that were brought up by the chief. Mm -hmm. That's really going to be. The downtown, uh, uh, the, not the downtown, the, the Vero Beach uh, Parking Advisory Committee, uh, which Tim and I <laughs> attend. What fun we have! <laughs> um, has you know been talking about this thing for the beach side, and of course uh, the economics of it are are difficult. But it might be an interesting thing, Kim, to bring those two ideas together. There might be uh, economies in uh, joining them up. Uh, I don't know, but. It's worth looking at. Um, well, if they're not operating simultaneously, you know what I mean. If they have to, you know, if you got. Well, I, I didn't mean use one bus for the. Well, know, no, I meant. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're looking at maybe some cost savings. If, yeah. Yeah. It it depends on what kind of services are being provided and when they have to. Yeah. There, there may be. Yeah. But, I, I actually, um, and, and this will sound strange, wasn't looking at a bus service. Wasn't looking at it. I was looking at a tram system. Yeah, that's tram more, or trolley. That's more adventuresome to go to Disney World to get on a tram than it is to get on a bus. <laughs> mm -hmm. Think about it. Yeah. And that's what I was trying to get the concept of. If we had a route, you know, the tram can park at the parking lot right here at Jetsons. It, that can be the headquarters. Mm -hmm. It can be. Then it does this little route, and it does it every so many minutes, or it does it on call. Because cell phones today don't cost anything. We could fund three cell phones and put them strategically and tell a guy at Scott Sporting Goods, yeah, my car is down here at the parking lot. Just a second. Mr. Tram Driver, we need to pick up at Scott Sporting Goods, please. Mm -hmm. I'll be there in about seven minutes. I'm on my way through Pocahontas Park. And it's, it's a social event. It's a concept. And now you got a home. And they could do the same thing at the beach by running a tram system up and down the road every so many minutes or whatever. But but that was my theory in it because parking always becomes the issue, even though parking isn't an issue. If you'll turn to the next page, which has the colors on it, all these green areas that you're looking at, they're government-owned parking lots. Now, it looks funny because I got it circled down here at the police department. Uh, it's actually the blue areas, the royal blue are the public parking lots that you see. And if you notice, I have one up here at the library. That's the library, but it's public. And I don't think the library is in our district. That's where the line comes, but I put it in it just so that you know there's parking there. The courthouse parking lot in blue right across the street. Uh, the, uh, that's uh, well. The line when on my map doesn't look like well, it shows it. I'm looking at the yeah. It shows the the one piece, the Carter's Associates Building, but then it comes back in. Well, I think that even if it were just outside right, of the district, but, it should but, be included. But just showing that if a tram system ran by it, it wouldn't matter. But um, this is just showing parking, and if you notice, it's kind of all right down the middle of the twin pairs except for the courthouse parking. Now you see a big parking lot way up top right that's uh, over by the school board, which that's just parking. But so that we can get an idea, what, what we need to look at also is where is vacant land or land that could be used for parking in the future, and this committee should look at that. There's parking by the community center, too. That's public back there. There is, but as, as you notice, I put all that in green, meaning anything in oh. green, you can park there anyway because it's government. Oh, okay. All this is city hall. I could park in this parking lot right over here that you all use that's, that's a employee parking lot. 
and not get that's a ticket. That's true. I did that so, the other night. So that's why I put it in, but that's why I put it in green so that we know we're not saying, yeah, go park at the community center. And they say, wait a minute, we're having an event. You're using our parking lot. Yeah. So that's what the green means, that there's parking in those areas too. What, what's the distinction again between the blue and the well, green? Well, the blue is public parking. Okay. All like right. the little okay. parking lot that's next to my building and the parking lot that's behind it. And there's a little uh, triangular parking lot right up here on 14th right. the corner. The one by Jetsons. The one by Jetsons. Mm -hmm. so, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, I'm just looking at your map here. I was just giving you some point of references. If you go to a number and look, that'll tell you what that business is. So it'll give you a frame of also reference. The Early on the Learning map. Center has uh, parking. I'm not sure. Where is that? Is that city owned? The, no, that's the school board. They, yeah, they have parking, and yeah. I don't think they mind people parking. People them. park there for the art strolls. Exactly. Yeah. So, so that it's when not, school's it's not, not when it's school's it's not in session. Right. Right. It's not designated right. they, here, but there there's a lot of parking in that area. Well, it's because it's a school site, and legally you cannot do anything on school sites because of the you're law, right, you're the, right what you call it, law. But it's, yeah, I wasn't it's sure if that was a school law, whatever it I was, wasn't sure who actually... <laughs> that's not what it is, but Jessica, Jessica Lunsford Law. <laughs> 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 But that, but that's that's why we shouldn't say go park over there. Well, no, I understand. I wasn't sure who actually owned, yes. was, had the ownership that's of the, the lot. School board. So it's the school board. And, and if you notice, that's up here in all that X'd out area because we can't control that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of areas that we can use. Um, but I just wanted to put what's what's really available at the moment. So these red dots are just giving you point of references of where places are in those areas to say, oh, that's where that is. That's all that is. Um, if you go down one more page, these are alleys. That's all that is, is alleys. Now, a couple of them are not alleys. It's a street, actually, between Firestone and the Kilted Mermaid. Mm -hmm. It's listed as a street number. Uh, actually, so but I put it on there because I alley. consider it's it an as alley. an alley. It's an alley, yeah. but it, but it is a street address thing yes. on the map. So but I put it as an alley, okay. and, and this is just to say we've heard about alleys. Oh, do you have creepy areas in alleys? These are the alleys we have. The city of Vero Beach was built on alleys years ago. Every home had an alley behind it. That's where the garbage truck drove. Right. Yeah. They did away with all those alleys and easements and gave it back to the residents. So. That's all that is, is to show you. We don't have an alley thing, but we, we could improve some alleys with our street lighting, with our painting, with, yeah, you know. mo Most of the alleys, uh, you know, if you go block to block, are really not that bad uh, very, at all. Very, very they're not what you consider well, they a could downtown. Could be made area. more pedestrian There's friendly, and I like in particular the one between the twin pairs. Wouldn't it be great to make that a little bit more pedestrian friendly? Obviously, it's needed because we have public parking in those areas. But I'm talking about the one west of 14th Avenue between the twin pairs, Barry. Right. That would be a very, very nice pedestrian alley where people could safely uh, use that alley, particularly during events, the art show, uh, downtown Fridays, that type of thing, and just feel safe in there and maybe limit traffic a little bit in those alleys to ingress and egress for the public parking areas. But I'd, I'd like to, before we go any further, it, it, it's now about a quarter till. Well, that's all I had. Uh, and Scott, thanks so much because you spent a lot of time. In a plain map that you can just play with with dots and colors, but yeah, that's great. it, it kind of focuses you on what we have and it does, does not show the retail areas nor the art galleries. I'd like to designate the next meeting date because I think it's very important that we meet again and we meet quickly. We still have this March 31st deadline. I'm going to be beating on that drum. Uh, what is a good date uh, for the committee? Take out your calendars. Uh, it'd be nice if we could get something in maybe uh, the end of the month. It's a short month, so it could be the first of March, the first week of March. Well, uh, I think we should meet again in February, and I would suggest uh, from my calendar, because I see things that are going on here, I'm going to suggest uh, that we do the t Wednesday the 25th. That's two weeks from today. Um, yeah. She's looking at the. Mm -hmm. um, we could do it in the afternoon. I have a noon appointment that day with, uh, with a group. We have um, Friday the 27th. 
we, we could do it if we could do it uh, after 2.30, Sherry, uh, that afternoon. On the 25th? On the 25th. What's what's available on the 27th? Uh, the you never know, do you? All day is available on the 27th. Would is if the morning is better for people we could meet the morning of the 27th or the afternoon of the 25th. Uh, I'm okay, you're okay, gentlemen. Of course we don't know about Jessica's availability but uh, 27 is fine with me. I, I prefer the afternoon of the 25th. I have I'd have to sandwich it between two appointments on the 27th if, if everybody can do it that afternoon, say after 2.30 or 2.30 or after on the 25th, that, that is a Wednesday, 3 p.m. Uh, on Wednesday the 25th, that should work out. Okay, uh, did you say 3 p.m.? 3 yes, p.m., yeah. 3 p.m., okay. Wednesday, 2.25, 3 p.m., okay. Uh, I'm, and and also gr great ideas here. I want to thank the committee, uh, but I, I promised that these meetings wouldn't go on that long. I want to thank the the public, Ken, for being here today. Uh, Ken, if you want to say anything, this this is a time to you know uh, say something because uh, what I'd like to do is is take these notes, uh, have Sherry summarize them in the form of minutes, distribute them to the committee prior to our next meeting, and let's get our thoughts really collected to get this capital improvement plan together. That's really the meat and potatoes of what we need to do to accomplish this goal on or before I, March I have 31st. A question. Sherry, did you get my email about the uh, banner costs? Sherry? I'm, I'm looking. I think oh, okay. I did. I just want to make sure. Yeah, well, Sher Sherry's looking at I that. Just... Mr. Chairman, can I make a suggestion? Please, yeah. No. I, st <laughs> I still think we need to have some overall goal and some objectives for what you're trying to do. It shows, you know, whether it's bringing people yes, downtown sir. to increase the, you know, and we're doing this, more security. I'm just saying that maybe we should, you should think that out a little to show what you're trying to achieve in a... Yeah. Some sort of, it doesn't have to be very detailed. I'm just saying then, as I said, the council will know and other people will know what you're trying to achieve. And just, I mean, you're coming up with great ideas, and I, I just think it would be good to articulate So a mission some, statement. Yeah, that's basically so, that. So perfect. Could, so we yeah. will add that to yeah. this agenda and be prepared to discuss yeah. goals and objectives of, of the Economic Development Zone yeah. Committee at our next meeting. Uh, also, I want to just add one other thing because we don't want to replicate what people are already doing. Barry's very active with the art district's people and they put together a great uh, art show with a shuttle. Uh, we also have uh, Main Street very active in the downtown area with our uh, plants and, and, and our uh, planters and uh, now we we also have heritage in the downtown area city of Vero Beach and Tim has even said that uh, they may even be able to offer some funding for some of these projects so think boldly uh, and, and the cultural council so we want to coordinate with all these groups because there are a lot of groups that are going to be doing different things in the downtown area I do serve on the board of Main Street so, so certainly we can coordinate with that uh, Gary and I also serve on a, uh, another committee the uh, community business association uh, and and we've had discussions about safety and some of the issues in in, in the area so uh, definitely we want as much coordination as we can get we're fortunate to have some business owners and downtown uh, business owners here uh, and with Barry and, and uh, Scott and so we, it's great feedback you know that you gave us today about public safety and that type of thing so next meeting, we'll be prepared to discuss the goals and objectives of the committee, and also we'll be prepared to discuss and start implementing an outline for the capital improvement plan. So there being no other, is there any other discussion, any One other, other business? quick thing. Yeah. Um, on what you're talking about for next week, what we don't want to forget as a committee is what is already being done in dollars and cents to this district that we're in charge of now, because we should be including in dollars and cents being spent, the downtown group, the art people, all the money that's being spent there is in this district that we need to include in our plan. So when the city sees our plan, they see this, oh, there's all already $178,000 being spent downtown. Oh, no wonder they want 95%. So that makes good sense because they're already investing in themselves. If we don't tell them, they're going to think of this as a zero line thing and we're starting at zero. And as you know, starting at zero in anything is tough. Okay. I think, I think that's good. Yeah. 
we never pass over that. That's why we asked you to come up. <laughs> I think we'll stay here the whole time and not say anything. <laughs> not you, Ken. Uh, for the record, Ken Dig, 1846 21st Avenue. I uh, just wanted to uh, let you know uh, what I think about uh, Mr. Chisholm's ideas, project ideas for net economic development zone, uh, 1 through 11. I am in agreement with them, and I would ask you to please consider them. They, what we consider very doable projects. A lot of these projects that Mr. Chisholm listed there have been talked about over and over again in the past, uh, especially if you go way back to our visions program, which now we're going to start talking about at some of the council meetings. Uh, Mr. Chisholm, you hit it right on the, right, the nail right on the head. Uh, the other thing I wanted to make a suggestion to you all on is go out in the evening and take a look at 14th on the busy times and 60. And that would give you an idea of where you can make suggestions to the chief and city, uh, city council, then to the chief, as far as some times that you could have those streets patrolled, uh, not only with a beat cop, but also with their patrol cars. And I think if you talk to some of the business owners, they'll give you some feedback where they could use some help. Uh, somebody had talked about the alleyways. It would be helpful if they get lit up again. I'm going to suggest to you if you guys are interested and Mr. Chisholm is familiar with the period lighting, go to Jacoby Park. We have period lighting there that is similar to what we have downtown. Uh, that lighting that's in Jacoby Park and Piece of Pie Park is part of our inventory now and you can get some prices on that if you're interested. And I humbly suggest to you you could do a mixture uh, what we call the Cobra lighting in places where it's not economically feasible to have the period lighting, like maybe down the alleyways. Uh, Mr. Torres, you talked about the alleyway uh, west. Uh, what was the alleyway again you were talking about? It's west of 14th Avenue between, uh, the, between the All right, pairs, yeah. between the pairs. We've talked about that uh, years ago, and Mr. Chisholm is familiar with some of this conversation. That would be a nice alleyway to start working on with some of your capital improvements. You could do the lighting there. Uh, some signage, which is I think is great. We talked about all this years ago. That would be very helpful. Uh, there's some other things taking place. Uh, there's discussions uh, with the Art Village that I'll be in this afternoon at 3. I'm going to share with them some of your ideas that you had at this table, especially uh, Mr. Chisholm's suggestions here. So it's kind of all kind of coming together and working, so that's what I wanted to share with you all. I think the business community is going to be on board with you, and also as you're in your discussions in the future, think about with your trust fund. I was part of the forming of, of the group where you are at now. Mr. Torres was at the table uh, most of the time as far as where you can bring in grant monies and also from private funding. You talked about that a little bit today. And I'll leave you with this. Uh, whatever you do, you talked about a band shell in Pocahontas Park. Uh, if you do have a company that's willing to front the money for that, also think about the maintenance out in the future. You know, how are you going to maintain these projects that you're going to put into place? Because that's very important because it takes tax dollars to do the maintenance. Also, when you think about a band shell or any type of covering, uh, remember now about your homeless situation. Uh, the chief explained to you they removed a the little gazebo because of this situation. So you always have to think about that. But anyway, thank you for your time and thank you for what you guys are doing. And Ken, thanks for your comments. We appreciate your coming. There being no other business. One uh, quick thing. Okay. Palm Bay, this little notice that they gave you, I got it in, the, in my email today. I'm a member of Palm Bay also. This just came over the website, and I printed it off just to say, gosh, you know, I don't <coughs> think any of you sitting here knew we had 38 restaurants in this area. None of you. Not even oh, 10. Actually, I had a pretty good idea. I didn't idea. know until I started counting. <laughs> yeah. And, and this little newsletter from them, which is their calls economic development newsletter would tell a prospective person who wants to go in that area oh look this these companies just went into that area in the last six months kind of impressive mm -hmm. didn't cost a whole lot uh, is that di well, it's digital right mm -hmm. yeah this just came over my email from them mm -hmm. yeah the and main street should be keeping up on that kind of information right because that's yeah. part of their yeah we and we are yeah. and maybe i could bring that's great I mean, it is but i just noticed it said you know, i just yeah. noticed it said economic development yeah. newsletter yeah. you know there are uh, and i, I don't want to belabor this now but there are a number of digital uh newsletters and blogs and uh various things to promote tourism out there for Vero by different, you know, from Groups. from the chamber to, you know, mm -hmm. private. And maybe at some point we could look at reaching out to those groups and seeing if there's some unified uh, Vero, downtown Vero blog or 
part of a blog that uh, could promote the things that we're talking about here. That's just for down the road. And thank you, committee, for uh, coming today. And so this meeting is adjourned, and we'll see you in two weeks. Listen, you need to sharpen because you're too long. <laughs> <laughs>